What would you do if you were 18 years old and you were faced between paying bills and investing in your future? In today's episode, Adora Crystal Evans emphasizes the impact of mentors, the courage required to leap into the unknown, the often overlooked link between sexuality and creative energy. You are just gonna love this episode. Would you like to think and grow rich? If so, keep on listening. This podcast is dedicated to those who have found their way from fear to freedom and for those who are considering undertaking this amazing journey. This is the Courage to Be podcast and I am your host, Tanya Vasayo. Before we get into this episode, I'm thrilled to share that I'm hosting a series on how people's lives have been influenced by the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you'd like to learn and apply how to think and grow rich, go to the show notes to get some wonderful free resources and join the Courage to Be community. I look forward to being your guide and mentor so you can transform your life. Welcome back to the Courage to Be, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And we're continuing with the Think and Grow Rich series based off of Napoleon Hill's book. And today we have with us Adora Crystal Evans. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to have you here, Adora. So I like to start out in this series asking people how they encountered or how did you come about with the book, Think and Grow Rich? Like when did you first read it? How did it land on your lap? What's your story with Think and Grow Rich? Oh, for me, that means we go deep fast. So hold on. Do your scene, people. So spoiler alert, stripper to producer on the Discovery Channel. That's the transition that happened for me by reading Think and Grow Rich. And some people are like, I'm exiting off now. That's okay if that's you. But for some of you, you're like, whoa, turn it up, rewind. (laughs) What did she just say? So yeah, I was 23 years old. I was already into self-development. I first started in self-development at 18 when I was living in a boarded up home with no electricity. I had already lived on my own from the and with friends from age 15, lived on my own at 12, was drinking Mad Dog 2020 at eight years old and had already walked through many, many other things that part of the human condition. So many people have experienced. Sometimes I joke and say there were parts of it that are like an episode of Shameless. If anyone's ever watched that, I've only watched a few. But at 17, instead of paying for my electricity, I invested in an Herbalife distributor kit. I'm no longer in Herbalife, but inside of that distributor kit, there was a cassette tape. And in that home that I lived in, there was no sheetrock and it was dark because why? I didn't pay electricity, right? And instead of electricity, I got that kit and I met Jim Rohn on this cassette tape on a battery operated Walkman radio. And it was like, and maybe some of you listening have had those moments and maybe this is that moment for you where you just feel like, you're lost, you're alone. And then someone cuts through the darkness and touches your heart and lifts your vision or lifts your spirit. And this was that moment for me when Jim Rohn, I met him and I felt like he was talking right to me. And he was saying, look, we're all headed in this metaphorical I'm going to paraphrase, but he basically was saying we're in this metaphorical sailboat in life. And we are headed to a destination that we will eventually arrive at. And he said, if you want to know what that destination is, look at your past. And I thought, oh my gosh, because I'd made a ton of mistakes already. I was already divorced, by the way, at 18. Married at 17, already divorced, town scandal, you know, and living in a boarded up home. You know, I told you I was drinking at eight. I mean, all things point to yes, success, right? No, 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 it wasn't. There were more statistics at that point. And and at the age of 18, I could certainly feel 18 year old woman, her brain is still developing. And I was emotional and 
But yet here comes Jim Rohn and he says, if you don't like where you're headed and you look at your past and you see this destination, if you don't like it, the good news is all you have to do is set your sail in a new direction. And again, I remember like the chill bumps. I don't know if some of you get chills when truth hits you, but I was just like, I felt it. I felt like, okay, I can change. This is great. I can change. And then he said, go get mentors. And I was like, no one's going to mentor me. I don't have a car. Everybody knows I ran away in the middle of the night and a lot, like all this stuff was coming up. And then he said, if you can't find mentors, the library is full of them. And they, people that have taken their most important lessons and they put them into a book. And so read the books and get their message. And so I committed to reading books. My next program was Tony Robbins, Awake, you know, Personal Power, 30 Days, Pumping Me Up. And he sold me on constant and never ending improvement. And I bought in. I really did. I, I read like 80 something books that year and listened to thousands of hours of audio, even while I was sleeping. I had a one-time check of $8,000, roughly. I'm starting to mix up the cents. It was either like $7,853.23 or 8,700. And I I feel like it was 8,753, but that was huge, you know? And so that kind of set me on this path where I still, from that moment, when my heart opened, my communication started getting better. I started to think about how I was thinking and talking to myself. And I was seeing real leaps in my life. And I was certain that it was like all up, right? All up from here. But it was not like that. It was more like stock market (laughs) on a slow, you know, rise. And most people couldn't tell from the outside what was happening on the inside of me. And sometimes I couldn't tell. And I just want to stop there for a moment because even though it's a radical story, what's not radical is everybody's had those moments where you're, you feel a little lost and like, what just happened? You feel shook, whether it's you've empty nested, you went through divorce, you are no longer happy in your job or you hit success and now there are millions in your bank account, but you're wondering why, like why, what's next? I feel lost. What's next? I hit my vision. And so what's normal about that is that we all have those feelings, right? And anyway, I'll speed it up from here to get to the question that you asked about Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich. So I ended up getting married again, separating again, found myself a cocktail waitressing and a nightclub. Then I. What age were you at this? Because we started at 23 and then. No, we started at 18. 18, 18, sorry, yes. 23 was the age, probably 22, 21 and a half, something like that, that I was already married again, separated again, started working in a nightclub, and then started dancing. I saw the dancers were making more money. I thought, okay, I'll just focus up take the cash. And what ended up happening, I was still reading all the books. I was rarely drinking in the club. I was usually drinking Red Bull. I was using my sales skills. I was sending half of my income to my siblings and having them read books and write me business ideas and invoice me. And so I was doing a lot of things, right? And there was still a lot that was not working yet that hadn't shifted in my belief system, like where my value was. I I had subconscious beliefs that my value, that this was the best I could do. It was the most money I could make and that my value was in my body, right? And I won't even go into childhood stuff on that, but many of you can imagine, right, where that came from. And so I was, I finally had a breakdown experience there, which is where I thought a mentor I thought I found a mentor and that this was going to go next level. And that person actually, it was way the opposite of his intentions for me. But that breakdown, this another relatable moment, all right, is that breakdown became my big, big breakthrough, 
because it went, it was that point where I went enough is enough is enough is enough. I'm tired of whining about it. I'm tired of imagine like thinking my way through. I'm tired of circling the drain on this shiz. Enough is enough. I have got to do something different. And you know, when you get that kind of fire and that fed upness and that passion, which by the way, you don't have to go all the way there. You could listen ahead of time, right? But I didn't. And so I got that breakdown moment that became my breakthrough. And in the back of all of the books back then, there would be a list of their favorite books, the author's favorite suggested books. And Think and Grow Rich was on all of those lists. And I had never read it. So after this little breakdown point, I did two things. I signed up for landmark education and wrote down, I just want to believe that I can earn money and it not be contingent on my beauty, my body, right? And then I read Think and Grow Rich. And I remember it was like a Thanksgiving and uh, there was a breeze at these sheer lavender curtains. I was sitting on this couch and I was contemplating and I felt again, like Napoleon Hill was talking right to me and I was contemplating, what do I want? And definite purpose. And I was practicing writing everything down and reading it out loud. And so I know the instructions were like one paragraph, but I filled uh, this book of index cards that was spiral bound (laughs) with like a million things. And sometimes I'm still that woman, like, what do you want? You can't have it all at once. And I'm like, but it's like, you know, sometimes you really do need to let some things go. And I have learned that lesson, but give me some grace. I was 23. So I wrote down a ton of things. And some of the things that I wrote down, one of them was I noticed Napoleon Hill interviewed all these successful people. And I thought like that really seemed to work out for him. It would be so cool if I had a job where I could interview successful people, but be paid for it. And so this was before podcast. It was before, you know, all of that was happening. It may even have been before cell phones. I'm 45 now. I don't remember if there were cell phones when I was 20, but you know, So I wrote it down and I was shouting it out loud every night and I'm almost landing the plane on this story to let you ask some questions. But someone else I met in that club called me and I'm going to pause there because there's a phrase many of us have heard that life is happening for you and not to you. And that in any given moment, there is uh, a way to be the person you're here to be. There is an out, there is a blessing. And you know, that club, my mistakes of choice and my mistake of thinking landed me in that club and kept me in that club. But I'm gonna say, and you fill in the blank with your own words, that God was working for me, even in that club, just like God is working for us right now, whether it's an extreme situation, a health, a marriage, a relationship, a business situation, or it's a more mild thing where you're going, I'm ready for an up level. And this is all I can see or know right now, but I can sense there's something higher. There's something calling me. There's something outside of my view, but this thinking keeps creating these patterns. How do I hook just God is in that. The universe, if that's the word you like, which I believe is created by God, but however you want to say it, is working even in that. Like it's not dependent on your perfection. It's not dependent on you getting it right. It's not dependent on you not making mistakes. It's dependent on what you choose to declare and be open to. And even, I I can't even say that I had this huge, big belief because I was a, a wreck in a lot of ways back then. But I had just a sliver, just a mustard seed of like, that could be possible. And somehow it rooted and took off. And here's how. So this guy calls me (laughs) and he says, nobody knew what I had written down. And he said, listen, there's a job that I had when I was younger and it gave me an incredible skill set and they're hiring. 
And I think you'd actually be really great for it. I can get you the interview, but you're going to have to pass all the psychology tests. You're going to have to like, you're going to have to land it basically. And I'd watch this guy go from a small apartment to a multi-million dollar company. And I was in a desperate yes. Right. And so I just said, yes, I didn't even know what I was saying. Yes. I knew what I was saying. Yes. To a line a lifeline, someone I'd seen be successful saying, I believe in you, I can open a door for you. And I was like, I'm on it. So I went and um, got an Ann Taylor suit because I'm 5'2 and Ann Taylor covered my curves and looked like not a stripper. <laughs> and I put my makeup on real dark. I had braces and I was trying to look older, more mature. I buried that I'd ever been a dancer and I got the job. And the job was as a producer for Pat Summerall Productions on the Discovery Channel. And the actual day-to-day -day work was they would hand me this stack of white sheets of paper that had names and phone numbers, company and industry of owners who were revenueing more than 10 million a year. And I had to call them and interview them as part of the sales process. So here I was, I wasn't even done yet with the book, Think and Grow Rich. I'd been shouting, I'm one of the many things and I'm interviewing people and paid for, you know, successful people. And I'm like, please, like I can't, you know, I was like, how fast can I get this material? And the last thing I'll say about that is I ended up being one of their top producers. I learned an incredible skill set that ended up setting up the next years of my life that where I got to work on the movie, The Secret, I got to work with Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, all these different, Dan Millman, Shakti Gawain, you know, all these, Joe Dispenza, all the What the Bleep Do We Know cast, including the actress, Elaine Hendricks, who gets the lizard on her head in Parent Trap, and all these different things. And I remember back to the, you know, that room, or the home, the board up shack, I remember thinking, if I can ever impact someone the way with my story, with my message, the way that Jim Rohn is talking to me right now, like that would be amazing. You know, it would mean I've arrived at this more like a place in life that would be meaningful. And, you know, now I've received lots of letters, you know, from people that I've been able to help impact, you know, be a part of, I get to work with the Napoleon Hill Institute, with the Napoleon Hill Foundation, with Russell Brunson, and lots of other just incredible, incredible human beings. And I get to create the next vision, like, okay, what's next? So that was a long story, but it's a big, important story in my whole life where I think a lot of us with Thinking Grow Rich have that feeling, but this is, you get it. It was one of those major pivot points where life was never, ever the same for me by applying and reading and listening, which is why it's so special to me. One of the many reasons. It is an amazing story. And I'm glad that you shared every little bit of it. <laughs> I have so much to unpack from it though. So you're in this session at 18. Do I pay for electricity or do I buy the tape to listen yeah. to Jim Rohn? What went through your mind? Because I don't think a lot of 18 year olds would, or for ourselves, anyone that's older than 18, that were, if we're presented with that same situation, we would have chosen the tape. What, yeah. what do you think made you go in that direction instead of paying for your electricity? Because that choice, that power of decision and making that choice changed the course of your life. It did. And this is a great question because the same thing that had me make that choice has shown up for me again and again for powerful, in powerful moments. So it wasn't a tape that I was buying. This woman came into the jewelry store that I was working in and shared her body transformation 
And then she shared that she could mentor me and I could learn how to build a business like her if I would just, and I would get discounts on the products that I was already sold on by her, right? And so in that moment, I knew that nothing was going to change in my life, not my eating habits, not my emotional health around my body. I had no idea, you know, the jewelry store didn't, I wasn't seeing this big vision of management. Some people go in and they're great. You plant them anywhere and they go to the top of that and they plant. I wasn't that person, (laughs) you know, I just wasn't. And so, uh, but what I could see is this opportunity to shift. And I saw that my electricity was off anyway, and I was living with that anyway, and another paycheck would come. So like, I think I had more fear of missing the lifeline that I saw being handed to me than of, and why I say that's happened to me in other times in life is almost always the coaches I invested in to this day were beyond my current income. You know, the business opportunities or leaps that I made were not from the current reality. They were made from a vision of a future for myself and the choices and what would get me there. And look, many of those still didn't work out, right? It's not like they all complete, but there have been many times when, you know, if I just looked at the bank account or current reality that I would not have made or invested in a choice that then took me to the next level. Like, like for instance, when I first started selling high ticket coaching, right. And coaching clients, I wasn't even making a thousand dollars a month in my business. And I invested in a coach and the fee was a thousand dollars a month. Right. And at that time, my rent was just a little over that. And I was a single mom and I'm not saying, and I want to make, there are no income come claims being made here. There are no promises that when you make those leaps, you know, everybody has to check in with themselves. But for me personally, that question that you just asked and the results of my making that choice conditioned me to trust that process in other points in life too, where things were, if I didn't do something different, what was going to change, right? It was just more of the same, if not worse than where I was because, you know, so. That's so brilliantly said. I want to take a pause to share some things that we have and come back to this because it's a very important point for the listener because we're all being tested with this. If you've been enjoying this series of Think and Grow Rich on the podcast, I invite you to go to the show notes and download a free copy of the Think and Grow Rich book. You can keep it for yourself, you can dive deeper into the material, and you can start studying and learning what we've been talking about here. You see that other people have succeeded with these principles. So if you'd like to make a shift in your life, if you'd like to take your money and come to the next level, make sure to book a call with me. If you're wanting things to change in your life, it all starts by making a decision and taking action. So just book your call by clicking on the link in the show notes. I look forward to supporting you in your journey. Okay, so you were just sharing with us, Adora, about this amazing choice that you made and how it showed up again and again because you had faith in yourself. That's what I'm seeing, that you were able to take the risk with whatever situation. And in this case was you were 18. It's do I pay for electricity, even though I have this other amazing opportunity and I'm taking the money that I would use for the electricity to pay for these tapes, you know, and I'm going to learn. And it gave you the tools. It gave you the knowledge to take you to the next step. And then the paycheck came and then you were able to pay for the electricity. And this has shown up over and over again in your life with those choices. And I do believe that the universe, God, you know, source spirit tests us in those ways. Like you were saying that, you know, that you had to invest in a mentor that was a thousand dollars and a thousand dollars was what you were making. 
Again, mm-hmm. it's taking a calculated risk based and having the foundation of faith, faith in yourself, faith that things are going to work out. And it's interesting because this is one of the principles in the book, you know, that Napoleon Hill talks about, but I think you were already doing it unconsciously, not really knowing about it. So I want you to share with us about mentors and stepping into those moments of faith too, because we do get tested and we do get challenged no matter what level you're at. I always say at a new level, new devil. You know, I got that from one of my old mentors, but we are going to be tested. So in that case was electricity or tape. Then it was a thousand dollar investment for, to learn about how take high ticket sales, or do I go in with this mentor? And it's so scary What are some tips that you have for our listeners of how we can tap into that faith and trust and take those calculated risks? Yeah, well, I think I'm very happy to answer that. But I also want to go back on to the belief for a moment, because initially when I invested in the kit, I can't even say I believed in myself. In fact, at that period of my life, I didn't, but I believed in this woman that came in. I believed I could feel her authenticity. I saw these before and after pictures. I saw the team that she had grown and I could hook into that, right? Then Jim Rohn, I remember him saying, and I held on to this in my early twenties. If you don't believe in yourself right now, but you believe in me, then believe in my belief in you. I know if you do X, Y, Z, it's going to unfold. And I hooked into that right now over the years, I have belief in myself. I have belief in God. I have belief in, you know, all the things that I've planted in my life. And so I do take that risk. And whenever I don't have it, I'm like, God, you know, I know I'm called and I, I divert to my belief in what God has for each of us, right? And that God finishes what he, she starts in our lives, right? That I have all these things that I'll ground back in. And I think that's important to say, because I remember spinning out for like a year on like, I just need to believe in myself, believe in myself, believe in sometimes like you waste so much time, just take some action and you're going to get some confidence, you know, take some action, keep your word, get the results and you'll start to trust yourself some more. Right. So sometimes it's real easy to just, we all do need that. And Louise Hay was incredibly impactful to me and body love and loving myself. And so I'm not negating that journey at all. It's very, very important. And a lot will come from taking action and borrowing the belief wherever you have to borrow it, putting the faith wherever you have to put it until you grow that muscle of faith. Like it's not just this, you know, ordained thing. It's something that you exercise through habit, which Napoleon Hill talks a lot about cosmic habit force. Now for those moments and the calculated risk, again, I want to be mindful and clear that I'm not saying this is a law that everybody should, faith is a law everyone should act in, but you know, you know, really and truly, if you know, you need to take care of your child's food, you know, if you need to put it right, like, so I'm not saying just to every at every opportunity, you know, make the crazy choice, what you said is the calculated choice, in my spirit, each time I've made that choice, I've had a really strong, stirring desire for a leap into a different identity. I'm stirring it up right now in my own life right now where I'm going, okay, I'm ready for different out of here, like next level 10 X. Right. And so I'll stir it up and I'll start to raise the standard of what I'm wanting from myself and my life and my experience. And that standard could be financially, it could be level of intimacy in my relationships, it could be level of adventure, it could be in my health. But, you know, that's what was happening. I was having a very strong, strong, each time desire to leap 
And for me, I go look for who's already done it that can show me the way because, because why not? Why just like, like scratch, you know, when they're like scratching the wall, when there's a door that you could just unlock and open and walk through and you're trying to dig through the earth to get to the other side, you know, it's like, uh, you know, so I always look for who's living the best that I can see at the level that, that I want and is willing to teach that to me. And I will invest in it. I'll invest in the relationship. And anyway, let me get back to the question you asked, which is when there's a choice and it feels like a stretch and it feels like, oh, I don't know. I ask myself if all the elements are there, this is a proven system. It's a wise, trusted mentor or investment from I've really done the diligence. And then I go into my heart. I check with that. I look at my vision of the future and where I want to be. And I go, does this match, you know, the vision of the future? And then I now look to ask myself, am I making this choice based on fear or the past or a vision for my future? And so sometimes it's been so burning and clear that I just, boom, take the action. And then I get in action on whatever I invested in right and sometimes it's been like oh I don't know I've already invested in so many courses maybe I just need to do what I've already know like what am I but if the stirring is still there and I know that I haven't made the leap yet and what I'm hearing is resonating with where I see myself and with this then I've made the choice of like because I've done it enough now right even if I'm not yeah, I'm so excited. My future, you know, like the beginning, I just do it. And then I keep my word to myself. Right. And I know what happens if there's a system and hundreds of people are getting results with it. I can get those results if I apply myself. And then I choose from my future, not from the past six months. Have I been applying myself? Can I count on myself? Blah, blah. I make it from forget that. What am I called to? And does that make sense? It didn't sound super. Yeah, yeah. It it (laughs) is. It did. It completely made sense, Adora. And what I'm getting out of that too is applying yourself. You know, it's because many times we like sign up for courses or we want to do certain things or we dream up our dreams or have these visions or read these books, but then we don't apply it. You know, we let the information come in, we get the dream. And then it's like, Oh, but let me go back to my job, my secure job, my uncomfortable relationship that I'm not liking, the job that I'm not liking, you know, and, and we don't make those, we don't take action. We don't apply that that's been calling us. So yeah, thank you for that explanation. I think that that was beautifully said. I appreciate that. Well, and I want to, before we, before we hop past that, because there is the, either we don't apply Or if you've had enough times where you didn't apply something, I've heard that I've given the excuse myself and I've heard it from other people. You know what? I've already got all this stuff that I invested in. Yes, my energy and faith are stirring in this frequency right here. And I want to take a leap, but I just got a little afraid because I'm thinking about all the stuff all the places I let myself down in the past where I invested in something and I didn't apply. So you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to shrink back and I'm just going to go really go deep with what I already have. And what I found is that rarely do you actually go back because you that stuff's been sitting there and you didn't move it. So life is energy and everything's energy. And it's like, Sure, maybe you'll use some of that stuff, forgive yourself and notice what environment is lifting your energy again, right? Because when we have energy, we have leverage. And in that hot moment of like excitement, it's like when a baby is about to be born or conceived, right? It's like this hot moment where you're like blind to all the, is this the right person for me? Or this is, you're all about, ooh, you know, honey, baby, right? And so it's the same when we're birthing the next version of ourselves that there's a hot chemistry that comes up where you've got like leverage on yourself to actually birth something into reality 
and it's fresh and it's in this moment. So if you can hook into that and create from that space, your future, then that's the best. I just think that's important to say because, yeah, because, you know, it's a precious thing when your energy is up, when your emotions, your enthusiasm, and you can run with that. And sometimes we'll use our logic to bow out and go, nah, I'm just, and then whatever you've invested in, you still don't act on it, right? (laughs) The fair, a few people do, but okay. Now you had another question. That was such a great explanation because I was going to ask you, what have you done in those moments where your logic takes you to oh, but I don't want to do that because I fail. it failed before. And I love how you explain to focus more on the energetics of it versus the logic of it. You know, because the logic tends to bring us from our current circumstances, our past events, and that's what the brain does for us. It's supposed to explain. It's supposed to keep us safe. It's like, no, no look, I have evidence. You know, here's all the data, all the logic versus paying attention to like you're saying that energetic the excitement the new vibration you're like being in love with something new you know how do you talk yourself out because i'm sure you've had choices decisions you've made that you thought were calculated risks and then you're that was a mistake but what did i learn from it like how do you balance that how do you use that instead of beating yourself up and criticizing yourself to be able to continue moving forward and making choices that work for you that's a really great question and it it's still a, kind of the through line of what we were talking about is if i'm in that white hot moment and And yet I'm still having some logic that may actually be trying to keep me safe, right? And that is wisdom. I know myself well enough to go, okay, I'm going to sit with this for a moment. And I might give myself a day or two to, you know, like disconnect from whoever I was talking with and to connect into me and then feel it and think it out, right? And then make my choice powerfully. And then once I make my choice, I have my back, right? Because indecision and self-doubt and confusion, it doesn't, doesn't work. And if it's not the right choice for you and you're in action, it'll show. It'll show quickly. You'll start getting the muscle for that. So I just wanted to say that too. That, and then when I've made decisions, it happens so often, all the time. I make great decisions. I make a lot of really great decisions. But the reality is if you're an entrepreneur, you're trailblazing in any way, like you're living life on your own terms. Guess what that means? It means on your own terms, usually never been done exactly how you will do it before, right? And as much as it would be so nice to come at birth, they used to say if someone would give you the manual, but people will give you the manual, their version of the manual, right? But we're not given this straight up the the angels have ascended everybody on earth saw them at the same time and they gave us the exact rule book it it doesn't go that way it's part of the beauty of being a co-creator right and so the only way to to learn how your own intuition and body and everything speaks to you is by making powerful choices and being in the game it's not all sitting on the sidelines and contemplating and it's actually playing the game of life present going after the vision that you see and having the courage to face when you saw a full event and two people were there you know occur the courage to face when you have this amazing idea and you just gave it to your family or your and there it's not landing, you know, it, it takes courage to really be in the game. And rather than blaming, oh, I didn't know it wasn't right. He wasn't right. She wasn't right. Da, 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 da. Instead going, okay, game, game. I just did roller skated for the first time. How'd it go? Well, I slipped over there. I fell over here. Here's what can I need to work on balance? Got to get my core strength up and 
what, wait a year until you feel that's perfect again? No, you go and you get in the game again. So, you know, for me, the choices that I've made, I mean, mistakes are part of the learning. I mean, maybe you've heard this before, your listeners have, but when, do you have children, Tanya? Yeah. So, you know, when my little girl was crawling or my little boys were crawling and they fell, I never went, Why are you, to me? you know, you, you're like, Go ahead, you're walking, right? And then they get better at walking and then, so, and you're celebrating all the steps and then suddenly they're running. And I think you know, what happens to us as adults is we want to get it so perfect and we can be so critical and comparing ourselves to either what we see someone else has or the vision that's in our heart and like where we're going compared to right now. And you know what? There isn't a mega church that I know of or a musician that I know of or a famous successful person that I know of anywhere that didn't, you know, sing in the bar while people were drunk and not listening to them and heckling that or didn't, you know, show up and wanted thousands of people in the room and there are 10, right? Like there's a process and it takes courage to face that, to face the vision versus what's happening right now and to hold the vision and to keep walking and to make the mistakes and to receive the feedback and not beat yourself up. It also means not beating other people up, right? If we're beating other people up, of course, you know, we're going to receive that same beat up and being it, it's courage and it's necessary, right? Our mistake, it's feedback. So I think even reframing things instead of, instead of as mistakes, it's like, what was the feedback? What did I learn? Okay, maybe if it's an event I picked, you know, Thanksgiving week and people were checked out. Maybe I'm talking all about the features, but I'm not really listening to what my audience is, what they're saying they want, what they're saying they need. How could I figure out what they want? How could I get better? This is great feedback right? Maybe I should survey them. Maybe, you know, when my daughter was really little, there was a stressful time that I was doing everything for her and my drive, everything was driven. You're a parent. So, you know, it's like who I'm being as a woman, how would I want her to think? How would I want her to feel? What, what do I want to create for her? Everything was driven by her. It was very serious. So serious about all of this, you know, and like, like my muscles are so tight and I was shredded, right? I was shredded and strong, but I realized that's cool. But if she doesn't know that and not just like, she'll know it when she's 30 or she'll know it when she's 50, because that I was going to say, screw that, that. but that's a really, a lot of years to live in contention and a lot of life because So what I did was measure it by how often she was laughing when she was little. Like if I could keep her laughing, then I knew she was, you know, three, five, then that I knew that I was speaking in a language of connection and love and that it was landing how much I love her because I could see like she's happy, right? Now she's 12 and it's not about laughter. There's like a lot of eye rolls and mom, you know, but it's about when she hooks her arm and mine because touch is mine, one of my top left, but it's not one of hers. It's like probably third or fourth. So, but when she's hooking her arm into mine or holding my hand or wanting to snuggle or wanting to talk or wanting to do something with me, then I know I've been relating to her in a way that it's not just about what I think and feel is all about her. It's about, is she thinking that? Is she feeling that? Does she get that? And that's true with our customers, with our spouses, with the world. With God. We can be so certain in here, but we also need to enroll our environment and get the feedback and mistakes 
are often, you know, feedback on, did I follow my intuition? Did I see something there? Did I hold my value? Did I lower my standard? Did I really go all in? Did I, was I honest? Was that like, it's all feedback that if we take it, take the feedback compassionately and that can be challenging right I get there I mean like I can be just flying so high and I think it happened just a few weeks ago and then I snapped at my fiance I snapped at him on a Sunday right on our way to church right? and I was like and I snapped at him and then right after I was like oh my gosh I've been thinking that I'm walking so peacefully with pressure and more capacity that I've learned to re- and I've been celebrating that I'm getting so good at that But what just happened is I went sideways and I snapped at the people who love me the most. Who am I? I'm I'm not that great at handling pressure. This isn't what I want. You're not great. And I had about an hour where all my energy went down and I was self beat up. And I was like, and then thankfully I recognized that like, hey girl, what are you doing to yourself? You did have a great week. And yes, you snapped, clean it up. Let's talk about what, was going on between and we and we did and it ended up being a great evening but my point is that the mind and the emotions and our perspective and where we choose to stand in that is so powerful and like you said new level new devil it can happen to anyone which is why thinking what napoleon hill was talking about how we think how we feel how we're perceiving how we then take our actions to align it's so important to condition ourselves for gratitude condition ourselves to reframe to see it for us not to us like all of that that's amazing my summary from everything you're saying is taking those mistakes and using them or your failures if you're considering them failures mistakes and instead of beating yourself up And you will, because like you even did it, even though you know this material, you've been practicing this material for years, is just keep reminding yourself that it's just feedback. It's not a mistake. It's just feedback. Let's take a little pause again one more time, because I want to come to something that I'm perceiving from you, Adora. We'll be right back. If you've been enjoying this series of Think and Grow Rich on the podcast, I invite you to go to the show notes and download a free copy of the Think and Grow Rich book. You can keep it for yourself. You can dive deeper into the material and you can start studying and learning what we've been talking about here. You see that other people have succeeded with these principles. So if you'd like to make a shift in your life, if you'd like to take your money and come to the next level, make sure to book a call with me. If you're wanting things to change in your life, it all starts by making a decision and taking action. So just book your call by clicking on the link in the show notes. I look forward to supporting you in your journey. Yeah, something that I've been noticing as we've been talking, you have this energy about yourself. You have this magnetism. You have this aura of just attracting and... Mm -hmm. It's funny because we've been talking in the daily study group that we do a daily study group of uh, Napoleon Hill's material. We do it in English and in Spanish. And in the Spanish group, we are in the chapter of transmutation of sex. And I'm like, oh my God, funny that Adora has been, you know, went from stripper to fulfilling her dreams but I can sense that magnetism in you. And I'd love for you to talk about how do we harness this power? You're an attractive woman for anyone that's not watching on YouTube, that you're just listening to the podcast on Apple or Spotify or whatever your method is. Adora is an attractive woman. She's got the sexiness going on. Like I I see it in her and she has this magnetism. You can look her up. You look it up on, on YouTube. But how do you harness that power? How do you interpret that chapter? Because I can see a lot of your desires fulfilled, you know, that you've achieved these goals, that you've achieved these visions because you've known, you've learned how to harness this energy. And especially as you were speaking before about that energy, please share with us. What's your secret? What's the secret sauce to this? (laughs) Well, I'm so glad that you brought up that chapter because it's funny how we were talking about 
that burning desire though and how something is birthed in that moment right and i really believe that our subconscious mind and is a lot like the way the feminine operates and when i say the feminine i mean specific you know when a male and female combine energies and a child is born from that energy which is sex sex happens and then a seed enters the woman and then it over time grows in the dark in the mysterious and then a life comes through right i really believe that like napoleon hill was saying that energy is what creates everything it looks different and some people burn all that energy in sexual addiction. And I think it's very healthy to be in sexual relationship with your partner in a loving, you know, way. But for trans, this energy, I've always looked at it like this with the feminine. So whenever a spirit comes from wherever spirits come from, where your spirit came from, the person listening, you know, before we entered into earth, and into our mother's bodies to be formed and then make it into earth, wherever they are, right? For that spirit to come in, the portal is a woman's body. It's the feminine, right? And so I think the subconscious is very much like the feminine. And that when you're emotional, and like, we can say that sexual energy that energy that happens when two people are, or even just one person is really, you know, lasered in on what they want, that it creates this energy, this magnetism, this exchange that is the secret to how life and how people continue, right? How animals continue, how all this continues. So with our desires, that's why Napoleon Hill was talking about being emotional when you're saying what it is that you want to manifest. It's even a benefit that women have or men, if you're the emotional type. Now, we don't want our emotions to hijack our center of truth. We want to be in charge of those emotions. But if you're a highly emotional person, you have lots of that stir it up get the fire going. What is it that I want that you can shake up and move and then link your desire into that and focus. One of my favorite ways to focus lately, because, because if you've been doing this work for a long time, or even if you've never done it, sometimes the hardest question to answer can be, what do I want? What do I want? Right. And it may, if you've been doing it for a while, maybe that you have automated answers. And so you're no longer connected to really digging. And whatever you think you want is something you chose 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. It's not fresh. It's not present to you. It's just on automatic. Right. So getting willing to ask yourself, what do I want? And the energy of playfulness, I really love. Like, wouldn't it be fun if rather than, especially if you're a controller or a high achiever <laughs> and you, if you say it, you're like this pressure to make it happen comes with it. Are you relating to that? <laughs> and you're like, so when you start to think of what you want, it starts to feel heavy because you're like, well, how, and when am I going to have time for that? And what does that mean? So sometimes we need to like trick our brains out of that space. And that's why I love the question, like, wouldn't it be fun if, or like a game of imagination. And in that game of imagination, I might say really outlandish things. Like my daughter once said, mom, I hope one day I'll fly into the plane. I will fly up in the air, roll down the window and taste the cloud. I bet it tastes like cotton candy. You know, she's well beyond that now, but it was the cutest thing ever. I was like, that would be cool. Right. So sometimes to get our brains out of logic and responsibility and can I even do this and limitation 
you can play in things that are never possible, right? That we know of, like flying up and tasting the cloud, right? And and who knows, that could still be possible. Swimming with mermaids. I don't know, like real mermaids, not the ones in the tails. Are, those are cute too. But really playing in things that you think are just totally childlike. The, the Bible talks about faith like a child, you know, childlike, so that you can like, loosen the rigidness, you know, loosen the, I'm in control of it all. (laughs) Because we get kind of jaded sometimes, even the best of us and get a little of a wall of like, what we're willing to say, because now I got to make it happen. And, and then playfully go, Oh, wouldn't it be fun if you know, I was flying on private jets more and wouldn't it be really fun to go visit some islands? Wouldn't it be really fun if I went with a group of friends and we, you know, built a house in Africa for what, whatever, just really, really playing in a way that isn't all about your serious soul calling and the serious business of getting the best life for everyone. And because it can become very serious to those of us that take this really serious, right? Because it is serious. It's your life. But that can be a block is what I'm saying. So playfully thinking about your desires, then drumming up your emotions. And everybody, if it's been a while since you've gotten those emotions going, it may be going and taking a belly dance class. It may be skydiving. It may be serving in a soup kitchen. It may be painting, getting chalk and painting art on your neighbor's sidewalk, right? It, I don't know what it is for you, but it's something that's got to break your way of being and get you into a more playful, open state and to where you can access your emotions and you're not just forcing, forcing, forcing. And then this isn't all required, okay? But this is like where, what, (laughs) it's not like you have to do all this stuff every time you're saying your goals. But what I'm saying is like, there are different access points to it. Then getting the emotional state up, priming the emotions. I start talking loud. I dance around. I'm talking to the walls. I'm like, for other people, it may be they're meditating and they're circling or they're breathing or they're... it's there's not this magic path it's just about what is going to get you emotionally awake and then visualizing what's possible and what would be fun to create if you could create anything and what it would feel like and even visualizing like if it happened instead of like when it happens which I love that but again if you've been doing this work for a while sometimes that could be like pressure Well, I got to make that happen by a certain, so if you could like, okay, if that happened, how would I feel? What would I be acting like right now? If it happened, like that would be cool and everybody's different. So I have to play all kinds of games with my brain girl. (laughs) I I love it though. These are great tips and especially for Miss Tanya here that has to have it all in place, control on their I mean, you were just speaking my language and the, the person that gets me out of that is usually my husband. He's the complete opposite. You know, he's like 95% that creative, playful. And I think that's sometimes I'm actually, I get a little bit jealous when he's like that with my daughter because they get to connect yeah. because they're in that playful mode. And I'm like, but I used to be like that. Like I need to jump in, you know, what I'm missing out on this. So I really appreciate you bringing this up and just bringing that reminder to our attention, you know, because even for anyone that's in that playful mode or has that personality, we all can get caught up in the seriousness of adulthood and responsibilities and, you know, life. And we start tightening and tightening and tightening instead of the loosening up and tapping into that energetics of the magnetism of the, you know, transmutation of sex, you know, that it's just an energy. And it's so funny. I am so glad that I asked you this question because it has not shown up with any of my other guests that we've talked about Think and Grow Rich, you know, these conversations are very organic. I don't have them pre set up or whatever with what questions I'm going to ask. 
But I love that we've been able to tap into this particular chapter because sex is such a taboo subject here in the States and growing up in Spain, I can't even tell you, you know, but I love that we're able to have a conversation around this and for you to share your tips of your magnetism and your, you know, how you tap into that energy that's available to all of us. Well, and it births it. That's the part to land is that whether, I mean, Napoleon Hill was talking about it. It's in Kundalini. It's, I love the idea of you getting it, like when you feel that with your daughter to just go in and flex a muscle, discover a part of yourself or you give your, and even if it's just for little pockets so that you get the connection, she gets the connection. She gets to be your teacher as much as you are her teacher, you know, which is really beautiful. And there is a time to be serious. I get it. But I'm always more resourceful when I relax a little, right? When I relax, whether it's through play, even Iron Men must have recovery or they yeah. can't keep doing it. It's like our brain and needs that recovery. And back to sex transmutation, when that energy is hot and you're fanning the flame and then you're planting the desires and the seed is planted then it's just, it, it's there. So it's more about protecting that, putting faith around that, loving that, keeping the, the synergies, you know, flowing. And I really believe that it's the same energy that births a human, that births the inspired, the in spirit into physical reality. And that is, you know, what that chapter and lots of other people around manifesting have tried to talk about. So I love it too. I don't think I've gone deep in a while on that. Thanks. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Dora, I could go on and on all day with you, but we do have limited time. And I'm just curious, where can people find you? Yeah. So we'll put it in the show notes. I think Facebook or Instagram is the best. And okay. the reason we'll focus on Facebook a couple of reasons I love that is one, we put out events all the time, whether it's, you know, for people stepping into their next level of coaching, or they want to study with us, or they're just always great things going. But the other reason is if someone wants to voice memo me, I can check them out. I can see what they're creating in their life. It just feels more connected to me than an email or something like that. And yeah, so that'll be in the show notes. That's perfect. Thanks for your time. This has been amazing. I love asking you all these questions, hearing about your journey. I could dive, I'm telling you hours more, spend more time asking you about all these parallels that we've had, you know, between Landmark and just a lot of things in common. But as we're wrapping up, I always like asking this question, what's one piece of advice that you could, that we can leave our listeners with to live a life with more courage? Mm, to live a life with more courage as the, well, okay. So I think to live a life with more courage, being willing to go inside of yourself and take the time to discover what is it that I want? Who am I here to be? And then trusting that that design, it's just like a bird. You could take a bird and wrap strings around their wings. They're always going to desire to stretch out and to fly because that is their design. It's what they're designed for. So I really believe each of us have this design inside and we're loaded with it, right? And so if you'll go inside and do that work and then take the action of the faith, the next best action you can take within that design, you're going to begin. Your design is going to take over. Like you don't have to tell a bird how to be a bird or a dog how to be a dog. Like it's going to take over and it takes courage to take the first step. But as you're walking in that design, there's some momentum that will take over and will begin to show up for you that will naturally help fan your courage, you know, because you get the result. So you're like, I've been here before. I felt scared before, but the result was that 
I got this, I got that, I helped this person. So that's the best answer I have for you in this moment. <laughs> and then the, the other thing I wanted to say is thank you so much for your commitment to help people live their lives in the fullest expression and courageously. And for all that you're doing to rise the tide of this big Napoleon Hill movement and the old but tried and true text that, you know, I really believe when there's a wave like this coming, it's because it's what the planet needs. It's like we have reached a tipping point where people get to be free financially, spiritually, physically, mentally. And this is one of the core movements or cultures or teaching that is here to really help raise people up and have them live their vision. And you are really, you know, being a torch bearer in that and turning on the lights of others. And I just want to thank you for that. And thank you for having me here. Well, thank you so much, Adora. I appreciate it. I received that too. Yes, I feel like we're all on this mission. You know, if we've been touched by this work and we've been granted the opportunity to learn it, to understand it, to bring it to the world, you know, like I just, I feel that calling, you know, I just have to inspire others. So thank you so much for that reflection. I appreciate you. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Adora. I am so grateful that you joined me today. If you enjoyed it, there's one thing I'd like you to do. Click on the follow button so you don't miss a single episode. Leave me a rating and a review and please share. As my way to thank you, email us a screen grab of your review at the email in the show notes and we will send you a free Crafting Your Future guided visualization, which is so simple to do with outstanding results. It will empower you and give you the confidence to attract and create the life you've always desired. See you in our next episode.